Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience and listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to Mission Matters, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. And if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Tom Boucher on the line, and he's CEO over at Great New Hampshire Restaurants. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam, very much. Oh, man. So uh, I'm excited to bring your story to my audience today, Tom. I mean, because what a story it is. I, I'm not going to spoil it. Of course, we're going to work through this and, and what you've managed to do over at the great New Hampshire restaurants. You have some amazing concepts over there and we'll go through those also. But maybe just to just to get us started for those that aren't familiar with your work yet. Um, tell us how you got started in the restaurant business. Uh, it was really by accident, it ha- and that happens a lot in this industry. Truly, um, you know, I started out pouring draft beers at the at the pub in in the college that I went to, and just had a ball doing it. And and uh, it just kind of it gets you like a bug. I mean, it it bites you, and it just sticks with you for some people. And then that's what happened with me. So were you uh, were you going to school for hospitality, or was that like part of the plan in a little bit, or was it like uh, no, actually. Um, Believe it or not, I have my degree in chemistry. And um, at the time, you know, and I say this a lot to young people, you know, when you're when you're 18 years old and you go to college, you don't know exactly what you want to major in or, or maybe you do. But I picked chemistry because I loved the uh, number side of the, the mm-hmm. study and I loved the theoretical side. And I just I did well. And I ended up uh, graduating and I got a full scholarship to get my master's degree at Villanova. Uh, I attended Villanova for six months. And again, here I am 22 years old. He's still, he's still just a kid in my mind. And I did some soul searching and, and figured out, I, I just didn't know where my career would be in chemistry. I couldn't picture myself wearing a lab coat, uh, for the rest of my life working in a lab. So I left uh, much to my father's surprise, giving up you know full scholarship at such a great school, and I came back home and uh, tried to figure out what I wanted to do. And I just said, you know what, I, I enjoyed that experience working at, at the pub, so maybe I'll go work in a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, so I took a job. I applied as a server. I had never served before, you know, true serving. I only just poured beer, right? So I um, took a job at a company called T Bones Great American Eatery. Uh, the restaurant was only a couple years old and I started serving there. And uh, again, I just, I just loved it. And one of the managers at the time approached me and said, you know what, you've got, you've got something in you. I can see that you would be a good manager. Uh, what do you think about becoming a kitchen manager? I said, oh, sure. I mean, I never worked a day in a, in a commercial kitchen in my life. Uh, so I, I literally was, training for six weeks, learning how to make everything from scratch. We, and um, I became a kitchen manager. And over the years, I just kept growing with the company. Um, within three years, I became a general manager of one of the T-Bone stores. At the time, they had three T-Bones, and there were three founding owners that started that group in 1984. Hmm. So when I took over as general manager of their third restaurant, that was in the early 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, and from there, I kind of got in a place where I still wanted to grow more. And the owners knew that. I made it very clear to them that I wanted to do more. And um, I became the director of marketing for them, yeah. um, you know, with some assistance from one of the owners. But uh, I, that's, that's where I really started to enter into a higher level in the company. And then in 1995, uh, I, I said, 
I'd like to be an owner in this company. And wow. they found uh, they found a location to open uh, a different concept called Cactus Jacks. And they asked me to become a founding owner in that restaurant, which I did. Um, and at the time, you know, I was only 29 years old. So I, and again, you got to put cash up that you, you're not, the, the bank's not going to just loan you all the money. So yeah. as a, as an, uh, an owner, I had to put up, uh, somewhere around $40,000 and, you know, 29 years old, I, I didn't have that kind of capital. And, um, my dad was gracious enough to lend me a good chunk of that. And I also, uh, borrowed from a, from a bank using my car as collateral, uh, because it was fully paid off. You and, uh, car. That was very risky, obviously, at the time. Um, but I did it. And uh, I, I ran that restaurant for a number of years. And we continued to just grow at, at a mm -hmm. slow but purposeful pace. Um, and in 2001, I became an owner within the T-Bones group. Um, and that was something, again, that I, I literally asked for. Um, and then in 2004, I finally, I got to a place where I was really pretty much leading the whole company. And mm -hmm. I said, and, and the owner, the two of the owners had become pretty absentee at, at that, at that point in time. And so I asked them if I could be uh, the CEO of the company, because I'm really leading this company uh, down, down the road. And we opened uh, another T-Bones restaurant called, uh, sorry, uh, it was in uh, Derry, New Hampshire. So now we had four T-Bones locations. And then in late 2007, the two older partners uh, really wanted to retire and sell mm -hmm. the, the company. So the other founding owner, Mark, and I bought them out uh, on January 1st in 2008. And on that day, um, I, I, I remember it so clearly because it was New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. It was a sunny but brisk day. And I remember walking out of that closing and just having this feeling of, I did it. Like I own my own company now. Wow. And then within a second, I had this terrifying moment where I knew that it all stops with me now. So I went from this <laughs> euphoric place to, oh my God, it, it all rolls to me now. And wouldn't you know it, I think everybody that will be watching this remembers 2008 was just the, the craziest crash. Uh, and, and our sales went like this. And yeah. I remember really getting to a place where, what did we just do? We just borrowed almost $4 million and our sales are going the wrong way. And we, of course, we weren't the only ones. Yeah. Um, so in that moment, uh, we made the decision, and I made the decision to just really take a look at how are we going to keep customers coming back more often? Mm -hmm. And I did the, I did just the opposite and decided not to cut spending, which a lot of companies did. We did just the opposite. We actually spent more on marketing and promotions to bring people in mm -hmm. and it worked. We didn't make a lot of money, mm -hmm. but we paid our bills. We got our employees great, great working hours. They got paid great and it worked. You know, we wow. survived it and we came out, thriving on the other side of that. So that, that's a moment that uh, I'll never forget. That was a tough decision to make, but it turned out to be the right one. Wow. I mean, what, what a story, just first of all. So going from, you know, pouring, you know, starting out in college, let's just say at the bottom or at the beginning, I should say, yeah. of the journey to, um, to, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what your parents were thinking when they're like, okay, full ride Villanova. And then, uh, and then you, um, and, chemistry major and it's like mm, I'm gonna go work in a restaurant for you know I, I like I like that experience and then moving forward to acquiring the company working with them and really you've held you know every position I would argue pretty much in that whole restaurant um, food chain pun intended uh, what what kind of advice would you give to like people that are aspiring into not it doesn't have to be just restaurants but that whole sure. concept of like paying your dues or really that apprenticeship thing I feel like it's very lost on a lot of society Society today, the idea of that apprenticeship and growing through your career. Can you talk a little bit more on that? Absolutely. So it, 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 it's interesting because one of the things I, I love about my position and our company is I, I love to mentor and, and help young people because 
I went through it. I was young and didn't didn't know my direction and what I was going to do. I, I guess I would say, at least for the for the people that are going to go to college, mm-hmm. don't stress about what you're going to major in, because you, you may not end up being in the place that you think you're going to be. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I oftentimes tell young people if they're going to college, major in business. You're either going to own a business or you're going to work in a business. <laughs> So, you know, you can't, you can't go wrong with that, um, that journey. And quite frankly, the one regret that I have is that I didn't take any business courses when I was in college. I took economics 101. That was it. Um, you know, I had to learn everything um, in the accounting side of things on hands-on. I mean, I, I, I wrote our, our P&L spreadsheet that still lives today. And, wow. you know, that's, that's a, uh, that's a skill that I, I learned when I was in college uh, how to use computers, but other than that, I mean, I had no business background whatsoever. Um, I'll also say for the young people that I think I think it gets lost sometimes that you don't always have to go to college. You know, you can. I can't tell you how many of our managers here in our restaurants make. Some of them make six figures, and they didn't have a college degree. You know, so it's okay to not go to college. It's okay to go to a trade school. Um, It doesn't have to be the cookie cutter. You go to the four year college and then you go work for, you know, a sales, you know, sales position or something like that. No, I, I think it's great advice. And, and we actually share the same regret. So I didn't take any business classes either. And it, it, it hit me. It hit me when I, when I left and as I got further out of my career and I got like some of those basic concepts that I was unaware of, um, they really got me. And, they, and they, they, were, they led to some costly mistakes just because I didn't have some of the fundamentals. So I, 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 would, I would have to piggyback on that one, 100% do that. Um, and so I want, to, I want to go further into the actual concepts and into the restaurants and into a little bit more about um, what, what, what makes what you're doing special. Let, let's maybe start with some of the, the, the company culture. Like, tell us a little bit more about that and how that unfolds. Yeah, so we actually have um, six core values that we, we actually wrote a book around it. It's called uh, Sitting at the Table of Success. And these six core values are, they're, they're not just words on paper. We did take the time collectively, all of our general managers and our leadership team to work with a a consultant over the course of a week to really sit down and put on paper what our corporate culture, our company culture is. Because once you put it on paper, it it really changes. You have to walk the talk then. You know, you you can't you can't just say their words because you're now living by. I'll just give you one one example. Um, One of them is called Courage. That's one of our corporate, uh, sorry, company cultures is courage. And I don't mean courage has uh, two, two definitions. The first, the first um, definition of courage is, you know, let's, let's use the men and women that protect our country, right? That's true courage. They're out there providing safety and providing the freedoms that we all enjoy. The second definition of courage is having the courage to do the right thing, having the courage to speak up, having the courage to teach and coach someone uh, where, where there's a moment to, to do that. And that that's hard for a lot of people to do to, to some people call it confrontation or confronting someone. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't use that term. We, we, we say it's a coaching moment and, and that's what it is. People make mistakes and they need to be shown and, it, and we view it as we're helping them. So that's just one of our, our company core values that we, we operate on. Another one is executing greatness. Um, we picked that purposely because that's part of our name, right? Great New Hampshire restaurants. But we also, we also strive for greatness, not perfection, because that's not how the world works. And again, we just wanted to pick things that we truly believed in and things that we really do every single day. And we do. And we use those words um, throughout our days uh, in the restaurants. No, that's that's great. I um I because so, I think one of the things like especially as you're scaling businesses and as you're 
and as you're really trying to, you know, I mean, you have, you have many restaurants, you have many different concepts. So as you're really doing this to have that, like that cohesive culture, I mean, to me, that makes like the biggest difference. Like that's what makes people come back. That's what makes it to where you, cause you can't, and, and I talk to people about this all the time. It's like, you can't micromanage to the nth degree. Like you can only do so much of that. That only gets you so far, but that if you don't have that right company culture, if you don't know that buy-in, um, that will hurt you long-term. You're exactly right. And the part, part of our culture has always been to grow people from the ground up. I'm um, case in point, right? So I started as a server and here, here I am the CEO now. So that became a real big part of our culture. In fact, we have over a hundred uh, salaried managers in our company. Mm. Every single one of them, every single one started out in an hourly position. Wow. They were either a host, a line cook or, or a bartender. Um, we've tried a handful of times, and we're, we're not going to do it again. We've tried a handful of times of bringing in managers from other mm-hmm. restaurants, and it, they just it just doesn't work. They mm-hmm. they don't grasp our culture because they didn't grow up with it, and so that that's a lesson that we learned a couple of times. And now we we're just very committed to promoting and growing from people from within. Yeah. That's great. And I, I have that conversation often with my team. I'm like, guess who's the first person that edited one of these videos or edited one of our uh, one of our podcast shows? It was this guy right here. <laughs> so so when I'm talking about our culture internally and like and the content we put out for our for our, con- our clients and our guests, it's always thinking about like, how do you put that heart in it? How do you produce the best quality? And and it's not just um, a rote routine of doing this or that or editing or something else like, no, it's like this is a living breathing thing and we want to convey that so that's part of our internal culture that we work on really hard and the thing is it makes the difference it makes all the difference and i've noticed it and we we get the feedback so um, I, I i'm a huge advocate of what you're doing over there um i want to let's talk some about uh, let's talk about the food and the actual concepts so sure. we've gone through you know kind of how, how you started through your career we've gone through you know the people the people are at the bottom line the culture we know that if it's not in place then you wouldn't be able to have the success you're doing let's get into some of the concepts so let's start with the the uh call it the mothership it's t-bone's great american eatery uh we the the, the previous founders uh started in 1984 um, and at the time, there was really no, I would say for those that are a little bit older, they might remember Bennigan's, um, mm. that, that, that's what T-Bone's, the T-Bone's concept was like, it was casual dining, it was all made from scratch food, really value driven and catering to families and seniors. Mm-hmm. And to this day, 36, God, I don't know, how many, I can't do the math, but <laughs> coming up, uh, 36 years, yeah, 36 years later. It's still the same core business approach. Wow. It's all made from scratch food. We cater to families and seniors, and we do a we're a very high volume restaurant, and mm. um, we're in that casual dining arena. But it's clean, it's comfortable. You you, you feel like you're dining um, in a very comfortable atmosphere with warm hospitality. Um, and that's, that's the T-Bones concept. Hmm. Uh, we just opened, uh, our sixth one, uh, last, uh, September. So we're, we're excited about continuing to grow that brand because it's been successful, as I said, for 36 years. The second concept is Cactus Jacks, the one that I, uh, co-founded in 1995. And we have, um, two of those. One of them is actually, uh, underneath a T-Bones. We have a, 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 a lake location up up in uh, Winnipesaukee where T-Bones is on the top floor and Cactus Jacks is on the bottom floor, which is very unique. Uh, A lot of people, you know, think that they're two totally separate restaurants running from each other, but little do they know it's the same owners, right? (laughs) Uh, So that concept is a little more uh, driven towards, it's obviously Southwestern, just the name implies uh, Cactus Jacks and it's Southwestern, it's Tex-Mex, it's barbecue, uh, a little bit of Southern food. And it's um, it's got a nice, cool, fun bar. And, and I think that that's what really separates it from T-Bones. There, there is overlap with customers because uh, all, of our, all of our restaurants are within 30 to 45 minutes of each other. Mm. And um, so there is some overlap, but the, it, it definitely skews more younger and more towards the bar crowd. 
Uh, the third concept is I'm sitting in our third concept, and this was something that um, my partner Mark and I, uh, and my wife, which I, I get to give her a shout out, guys. I got a great story uh, about that too. She um, so C- Copper Door is a uh, upscale. I wouldn't call it fine dining. Um, it's an upscale restaurant that has a really great, amazing vibe. Uh, I wish I could show you pictures, but you can of course go to the website and see it. But it's a it's a 240 seat restaurant that has a giant bar. It definitely skews more affluent uh, customers, and the food is really upscale comfort food. Mm-hmm. So picture like um, if you take meatloaf, but it's not just regular meatloaf. Mm-hmm. It's it's bacon wrapped and it's got different flavors in it. So and we have an executive chef that creates all these recipes and it's, it's an open kitchen. So you can see all the chefs cooking and it's just a great, great uh, vibe. And it's been incredibly successful. We have, uh, we opened it we're so successful. We opened a second one. So we have uh, two copper doors and we intend definitely to grow that brand as well, because it's just been wildly successful, but I got to tell you the story about how the name came about. Please. So we were, uh, my wife and I were dining at a restaurant locally, uh, not far from where I am right now in Bedford, New Hampshire. And it was a Mexican restaurant and it had, it had an arched door and we sat down and she said, God, she goes, this place could be so much better. And it was good, but not, it yeah. didn't really. And she said, it really should be called the copper door. <laughs> and she literally <laughs> drew the, what the door would look like. She's an artist. She drew what the door would look like on a napkin that we, we saved and we took a picture of it. And that's how the name came about was just her coming up with it. And I always like to tell the story how the door is actually made of copper. Okay. Wow. It's a $25,000 door. And I, the reason why I love the name is it's a memorable name. It's not a name you have to struggle to try mm-hmm. and remember. I, it, it, it always bothers me when restaurants pick these obscure names that you just can't remember. I mean, it's probably the most important thing for uh, word of mouth, right? Is yeah. remembering the name of the restaurant. So I love it because it's memorable. And then the second reason I like it is because it, it, it it's another sense where you actually touch that copper door. So mm-hmm. it's another place to embed it in your head, right? And then I always joke saying the third reason is because my wife came up with a name, so I better like it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so, but she did, she did all the artwork and all the, all the restaurants. And uh, I give her a lot of credit for the success of Copper Door for sure. Wow. That, that's amazing. That, that That's a good story. First of all, the Copper Door. And so it originally started at a Mexican restaurant, but yeah, you, right. you had me thinking about this meatloaf and this bacon wrap. And I'm like, oh, thanks a lot, Tom. I haven't eaten lunch yet. I just felt my stomach. I'm like, uh... <laughs> it's funny. I knew you'd come up with something there. Um, so I don't want to, like, I don't want to, obviously there's there's going to be more than one answer to this, right? So this isn't meant to be a curveball though, but I, I want you to go through and maybe give us some of the, some of the things that you think make these restaurants so successful. So let's, let's just go through one at a time that what keeps, what keeps um, your, your, your guests coming back time and time again? Cause I know they all have three pretty unique, let's just say value propositions, obviously that amazing food or, or guests don't come, but what are some, what's some of that secret sauce? It's actually a really easy answer hmm. to, to, to give. We are so dedicated to t- taking care of our employees Hmm. And it, 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 to a point where I, I'm not even afraid to say this, even to our best customers that we, we treat our employees at times better than our customers. And the hmm. reason is they have become so loyal and so dedicated to doing the job, executing greatness that wow. they, they are the reason we are so successful and they feel it, they know it. And they in turn, take care of our restaurants, meaning physically mm-hmm. and take care of our guests. And it, it's really interesting because I hear it all the time from our customers. Where do you find such good employees? <laughs> and the truth is they find us because we have such a great reputation in the mm-hmm. hospitality industry here in New Hampshire that employees want to come work for us. Um, and they interchange too. It, just because you're a server at T-Bones doesn't mean you can't be a server at Copper Door. Mm. Uh, and they do. They transfer around and they like getting a, a new, a, you know, basically a new uh, scenery for them and a new experience. 
but it's the same, you know, I mean, the copper door menu is different than T-bones, but it's still executed at a very high level following recipes. We have systems and controls and they're all the same. I mean, the way that we operate each restaurant physically operate is identical. What makes them different is the atmosphere and the menu. And that's truly the only difference. Interesting. That's awesome. And the, and the systems part of it, I mean, that's the that's the key. Um, well, obviously the people, but the systems part, that's interesting. So they all operate the same, um, but the ambiance, the food, different. Uh, so I know you. I know you also within um, the great NH restaurants um, um, company have other things you do other than the, just the the pure food concept, um, catering or other things. I mean, do you care to comment on that just to give us yeah. a flavor of the overall portfolio? Absolutely. So we do. We we have a, a number of things that we do besides operate the restaurants. We actually have a a commissary, and for those that don't know what that is, it's basically a a centralized place where you. Pr- prepare either items uh, for your menu, or in our case, we, we do that. Like we make all of our chicken pot pie fresh, fresh from scratch. Mm. Uh, and it's delivered around in refrigerated trucks uh, five days a week to the T-Bones locations. Wow. Uh, in addition to that, so that's just one item that they prepare. In addition to that, we have a team of butchers and a team of bakers. So we have 15 people working in this commissary preparing all of our hand cut steaks, all of our fresh made from scratch desserts, and of course the other prepared foods. Also out of that location is uh, our catering. We don't actually cater from there, but all the foods that we prepare to do a catering event are prepared on that site. We have a giant commercial kitchen there that restaurateurs would <laughs> drool over uh, and it's it's fantastic. And it, it's we're able to produce an amazing amount of food um, from that kitchen. And then thirdly, out of that kitchen, um, because of the pandemic, we wanted to figure out a way to, to, to deliver um, meal kits to within the within the, uh, a 30 minute drive of our facility. So we came up with a new business called dingdongdeliver.com. Mm. And if you go on that website, you can order uh, meal kits, things like uh, well, one of them's chicken pot pie and it comes with mashed potatoes and you you basically you cook it at home and you you reheat the mashed potatoes and cranberry sauce and um, and it comes in a cooler that's ref- that has ice packs in it and it's delivered right to your home or your business. You don't have to be home. And it's been incredibly successful, especially uh, on the holidays. We have special menus for Christmas Eve or, or New Year's Eve or coming up Valentine's Day. And people order these, these meals because it's, it's convenient. And that certainly is a trend in the industry. People are looking for convenience, but they're also looking for great fresh food. Oh, that's great. And and what was the name of that website again? We'll be sure to put in the show notes, but I want to make sure that people that are maybe listening to this in their car get it. Sure. What's the name of the website again? It's, it's Ding Dong Deliver. And we literally, the driver walks up and hits the doorbell, ding dong, and they're on their way. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Uh, so um, obviously we're in 2021 recording this, depending on what somebody's watching. Um, what's next? So, uh, what's next for the great NH restaurants? Like what, what are some of the things that you have planned on the horizon? Uh, like, I, th- I think for sure we see another copper door, uh, opening probably not this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but coming in 2022, we actually have a location that we have our eyes on. We have direct contact with the property owner. We just happened to, to know him. So uh, I, I would say that that's probably the next big move. And, you know, I, I want to say something that just hit me as I was talking about, you know, we just happened to know him. Um, it, it's really interesting. And I, I would give this advice also to the young people out there that networking is such a valuable tool and it's free. Mm-hmm. And the reason I mention that is because I only know of this location for Copper Door because I happened to network at, I met this gentleman at a networking opportunity and he reached out to me. That would have never happened if I didn't go to this networking opportunity. Mm. And I'll share another story with you about how, how important it is to be involved in your community, be involved um, in in different activities in your community. Um, This, this entire career where I bought out the founding owners would have never happened if it wasn't for this situation. I played in a basketball league locally. It was an over 30, uh, over 30 years old men's league. 
I met this gentleman named Bill Greiner and I met another guy named Joe Riley. Had no idea who they were before playing in this league. <laughs> And we played competitively, you know, and we became friends because you see each other and we would go out afterwards. Well, 10 years later, after playing in this league, came the opportunity to buy out my partners, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. I had to bring in one major investor who came to the table with uh, a seven figure number of cash. And guess who it was? Bill Greiner from the basketball team. Wow. And then I borrowed uh, nearly... Four million dollars from a local bank. Guess who the banker was? Joe Riley <laughs> from a local bank. So two of the guys that I met from this basketball league were critical in making the, the buyout happen. I mean, it, it, you just can't make that stuff up. And to this day, I'm very close friends with Bill Griner and Joe Riley, and I are we're, we're we're the greatest friends ever. I mean, we we still talk and hang out and. It's just been a crazy ride that, you know, so we're talking 12 years ago and we're still, you know, still, still hanging out. Just amazing. Wow. What an amazing story from a basketball league game. Like to, to like, shake. oh man, that, that one blows my mind, Tom. Cause you're like, you don't always know what's going to happen next. Obviously. You don't. You don't and that's know. why I say networking is so important. Even, even in this exchange, it's one of the reasons why I decided to do it because you just don't know what 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 rock might what you might find under find under a rock when you turn it over. Man, it's exciting, Tom. Well, hey, I just want to say um, first off, thank you for coming on the show today. Um, it's been a pleasure doing this interview with you and really bringing your story and uh, the story of the great NH restaurants to to our audience and what you've done and everything from the the company culture to the people. And I mean, I I, I was not surprised by that answer because we've talked before, but when even just to hear you say it again, like that the people are the are the main component. A lot of people may say that, but um, it really comes through in what you're doing. And in your execution. So, um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time watching us or listening to us, depending where you're at, um, definitely hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to be a return uh, viewer and listener. Um, so, we've got a lot more great guests coming up for you, of course. And uh, Tom, again, thanks for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. You bet. Thank you.